Welcome to the podcast Jesus Today, which is a podcast that is focusing on what Jesus is doing in our lives and what he's doing in our modern society. Today we're going to start a new series called The Foundation of Faith. And it's not only the foundation of the Christian faith, it's actually the foundation of all faith here on earth. It's actually even the foundation of life in itself. It basically tells you why you are here on earth, why things here on earth are the way they are with evil and good, and why we have to die. When you know the foundation of faith, you it gives meaning suddenly why you have to die and leave everything behind, including your family. So... Um, and this uh, foundation has it has seven golden stones that we're gonna go through, and if one of these stones were missing, we cannot live life to the fullest. We cannot live life to the fullest. Each one has a meaning, and each one together makes the whole picture. But the first one is the one that explains God's master plan. And that's the one we're going to talk about today, and that's God's love. God's love, as you will see, is directly connected with everything you can do and I can do here on earth, and what we cannot do. God's love is directly connected with that. And as a matter of fact, you will find out that only God's love gives total meaning when you look at all the outcomes of life and the circumstances. Um, one of the things we're going to talk about is um, the most important element we have in life, what we trust, what every human being trusts the most. And that is faith. That is faith. But before we talk about that, let's see what the master plan is. What is God's master plan when it comes to love? And um, we find God's master plan in the book of Genesis in the Bible, verse 26. It says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. So already here we see we are created to be God's children, nothing more, nothing less. And we see that the family that we have here on earth is a direct image of how God's relationship is with us. It's the same. Because then it says, And let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over, over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth. God created man in his own image, in the image of of God, he created him male and female, he created them. And it's exactly like a family with two children. This is exactly an image of a family with two children. They, two children, are created in the image of their mom and dad. In this particular situation, it's not mom and dad, but Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us make man in our image. That's the Father, Son, it's the Trinity. So you see that man and wife is basically, and child is basically a trinity. They're all human beings. They're trinity or the little image or mirror of the big, of the big trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So basically, we are like a little copy. But then it says, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the, over the cattle and over, uh, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth. That's like a little child ruling over their own, um, their own room. Because even though we are God's children, it's in a much, much smaller, uh, much, much smaller scale. We're only ruling over this earth, little earth. But then it says, 
God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruit, fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on earth. So God gives authority here. When you are in my world that I created, you can use my authority so nothing will come against you. I'll protect you. And then he said, Then God said, Behold, I've given you every plant yielding seed that is on the surface of all the earth and every tree which has fruit yielding seed and it shall be food for you. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the sky and to every thing that moves on earth which has life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. So God is basically taking care of us. And we know that's the truth because when we read about the Garden of Eden, there was no sorrow, there was no pain, there was nothing. God actually met with Adam and presented all the animals one by one and saw him give them a name. You read that in Genesis chapter 2. And he also created the, the, the Garden of Eden with Adam and he was there every night. The creator of the whole universe that is so big was with Adam and Eve every night. He came down to them if they needed anything. So they were really truly his children. And so then you ask yourself, so why in the earth are we in the situation we are today with people starving, suffering? That's because Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They choose to eat of the tree. And when they choose to do that, they wanted to be the judge themselves of the good and bad that um, was in their life. So then God could never protect them. Normally, he would be like a father or a mother in a family today where a child basically don't worry about anything. Mom and dad goes to work, take care of the child. They don't need to worry about anything. We have to pay the rent. And they're protected from evil by the family. And that's the way it was with God. But when Adam and Eve wanted to learn about evil, they needed to be exposed to it. And then evil came in and corrupted us as human beings so we couldn't be perfect. And suddenly we couldn't be with God anymore. Because God is justice. And if we just were in his presence, we would die. We would simply, And we couldn't be in heaven. Because God already experienced that before. He loved the a cherub, one of his highest angels he loved. And he gave him a high title and much more than than I think anybody on earth uh, have gotten of the material things anyway. And uh, this angel still rebelled against God in heaven. So God is not allowing that anymore. So we were separated from God, but God still hurt when Adam and Eve uh, prayed to him. And he made a way out. He made a new family. Not out of Adam and Eve, but out of Jesus. That's that's why it's the Bible called that to be born again. To be born into a new family with Jesus. Jesus came down as God and became a human being. And then he obeyed the Father in everything. In everything he obeyed him. And then after that, he died on the cross to take the punishment for our wrongdoings, all human beings. And then he was raised again from the death. That means he defeated death. So when Jesus was raised, he basically wrote a death sentence for all evil forces in this world and and promised God, at a particular day, I'm going to raise up my kingdom and my children is going to rule with me because he's still God. So he chose to do that and he did that. So now when I say I want Jesus to be my leader, my savior, I want to follow his word. I become born again. I go from Adam's family to Jesus' family. And I say, I want to be a child of God, like the original plan that I just read here, because that's a covenant. That cannot be changed. A lot of people have tried to change it, but they die and disappear. And not only that, it says we have to rule over these things. When we have to rule over what it means, it doesn't belong to us. Even your title, everything you do here on earth, it doesn't belong to you. It's God's. You have to leave it. You have to leave it. It's a privilege. It's a blessing God is giving you, but only for a certain time. And after that time, you choose either to become a child of God and go back home to God, or 
you choose to be ever separated from God because with this corrupt evil nature we have, we cannot go into heaven. It would not be heaven. It would not be heaven. Jesus died on the cross down here for our punishment, but it also required that we wanted to be become like Jesus. We wanted to become like him as children of God. If we don't want that, Jesus is going to take our punishment because what Jesus' mission was to make us back to God's children, the original plan. And that brings me back to the element that I was talking about before, faith. Faith is the absolute most important element we have in life. It's actually what you trust in the most. It's like a transformer. It's like a transformer. That transformer is made to receive God's information. Let it be transformed so you can understand it. And the same with the Word of God. That's basically God's plan. But when God is not there, because evil came in and we got separated from God, the transformer in your life doesn't know that. It will take other information that it believe that was supposed to be from God, but it's not. And transformer is not a living thing. So it just takes all that information and transform it so you can have peace about it. But that doesn't mean that the consequences changes because it won't. It's the same. You're still going to die. You're still going to lose everything. And you're still going to be separated from God. And so am I. If I do not choose for Jesus to say, okay, Jesus, help me. I believe that you died on the cross for my punishment and you were raised again. I choose to believe that. See, that's God's love. That is God's love. And that's why we read in um, Ephesians, um, oh, Ephesians chapter 1, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly kingdoms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. So we basically have every blessing that you just saw that God gave us to become his children. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world. So he already chose us. He already chose us to be like Jesus, like Jesus was here on earth, following him in anything. That's what we are. We are a child that can that has his character, cannot do evil. We are just a child, we, but we trust God. God is doing what's best for us without even sometimes even telling us what's going on. So that's what he did for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blame, blameless in his sight. We don't need to worry about that. Jesus did that for us, so now we don't need to worry about that anymore. And then it says, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ. That's to be born again. Now uh, he said, okay, Johannes, you fell with Adam. Evil came into your life. You were deceived. You couldn't get out of this evil. You couldn't be perfect. Now I open up a new family. If you accept Jesus as your Savior, you will become a son in him. And if you choose to be like him and believe in his word, you're born again. And that's what he did. In accordance with his pleasure and will, the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood. That's basically his life, because blood is just a container. The forgiveness is of sin in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavishes on us, with all in wisdom and understanding. That is exactly what he's giving us here on earth. There's so many things here on earth we don't understand. The nature, we don't know when an earthquake comes, we don't know about disease. There are so many things, diseases we do. There are so many things we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen with us. But when we accept God's love, say, God, I don't want to be evil. I want to believe in you. Give me faith. Let my transformer be filled with your information. And let me accept Jesus as my Savior because I can't be perfect without him. Accept that he died and took my punishment and was raised again to defeat evil. And let me help to live by his word. So I can become a child of God and become like him in heaven. Then you will be it. Because that was God's master plan. And no matter what is being done here on earth, that master plan will not change. Stone number one. Love God.